Hey guys, it's Pucky Dude. Time for another Fake Grand Order Tips and Trivia video. This time the emphasis is on trivia. Today I'm going to talk about some interesting facts about the game's history. Veteran players may know most of this already, but anyone who's only been playing the game for a couple years may be surprised by what the game was like in its early days. Number 1. The back button on the fight screen used to not exist. When the game first launched, you had to pick your skills and which enemy you want to target before hitting the fight button to select your cards. If you forgot to pop an evade or accidentally focused on the wrong enemy, you just had to live with it. Technically, you could save scum, but that's a time-consuming process for a simple action. Uh, the reason it was designed this way was that the crit star distribution used to not be calculated until you hit the fight button. After they added the back button, they also started showing crit chances on the cards before hitting fight. Number 2. Summoning used to cost 4 Saint Quartz in Japan. This is something that NA thankfully never had to deal with, but early JP players couldn't do nearly as many rolls as we could at launch. 40 quarts for a 10 pole was pretty steep. Oh yeah, and it was only a 10 pole back then. The 11th was a more recent addition. Number 3. Servant sprites and animations were a lot more primitive at launch, especially in JP. Even if you're a newer player, you've probably seen a few servants get animation updates here and there to bring them up to the standards of more recent servants. The early JP sprites were in especially dire need of it. They had very few frames of animation, and the art wasn't very good. A classic example is Altria. By the way, she's actually had her animation updated twice since launch. Here's a uh, quick comparison. Number 4. Waver used to be a terrible servant in JP. Players today know him to be one of the best support units in the game. Even with several other excellent casters being added since launch, he still holds up. But early in JP, he was considered to be so bad that players would actually burn him in frustration. And a quick look at his original kit will tell you why. No NP batteries, level 10 on the second and third skills was as good as or worse than level 1 as it is now and his NP had a high probability of doing absolutely nothing to the enemy. He eventually ended up getting a free buff without it being tied to an interlude or rank up quest, which is something very few servants see. Number 5. NA has had a number of bugs that JP didn't have to deal with. These went under the radar and were either ignored by the devs or didn't get fixed until much later. One example was the At the Abyss exhibition quest during NeuroFest 2019. The short version is that King Hassan was only supposed to target the leftmost servant of your team, whereas he instead attacked at random. You can check out the video description on part 696 of my series for further details. A more infamous bug that plagued NA for a long time was the combat uniform's Gander skill. Its intended effect is to have a 500% chance to stun the target, meaning that it's guaranteed to work as long as they're not flat out immune. But for a while, it instead had a 100% success rate, which meant that it could fail if the enemy had any sort of resistance. This made certain fights way harder than they otherwise would be. And that about does it for this video. If there's a subject you'd like to see me cover, let me know in the comments and I'll consider it. Now, if you'd like to help support the channel, check out my Patreon and Coffee pages. Also, let me know what you thought of the uh, editing in this video. I've been trying to up my game in that department. Thanks for watching. See you next time.